Let's listen to a plasma speaker. So if you want to see how this circuit works, the other circuits that we have for this, the use of a flyback transformer and more examples, stick around till the end of the video. I will show you everything that you need to know about this circuit, then we assemble it on a prototyping PCB for one circuit and on a PCB kit for the other circuit and make some tests in order to see which one will get best results with music plasma arcs. So guys, let's get started. Video sponsored by PCBWay. Look at those great gold finish pads. Their PCB quality is amazing and for so low prices. So if you want to get your own PCB design manufacturer, all you have to do is to download the Gerbil files from your designing platform such as Altium, KiCad and so on, then go to PCBWay.com, click the code now button and insert the board settings such as thickness, size and finish. Then upload the Gerbil files and apply the order. And for just $5 plus shipping, you will receive amazing PCBs with professional look and great finish. Select up to 14 layers, different color for the solder mask, different finish for the pads and more on PCBWay.com. What's up my friends, welcome back. So guys, this is called a flyback plasma speaker circuit. And this is also a flyback speaker circuit, but it's homemade. It has more power and with a different implementation. We've seen how to create plasma in a previous tutorial using a small Tesla coil circuit. High voltage with high frequency will create these plasma arcs that will ionize the air around and that's why we can see this purple glow and also we can hear the air snapping. But that project was very low power and not that cool. And the difference between the previous circuit with the Tesla coil and the one that we will see today is that this new one is using a flyback transformer to elevate the voltage. Remember that a few months ago I've made a teardown of an old black and white TV and I found this nice flyback transformer. Using the multimeter we search for the low resistance connections and like that we can find the secondary and the flyback pins and then we can use it. Another difference between the last Tesla coil project and this circuit is that today we are working with a lot more power. You will see that at 24 volts we use around 5 or 6 amps of current, so that is around 130 watts. Please make sure that you stay safe, never touch the high voltage side and use proper tools. We have a lot of circuits online for such project. In my case I have this one and this also has a PCB and we will assemble it later and test it out. But then I found a better circuit that is made by Franzoli Electronics and you will have the links to his work below. The difference is that this is an interrupted plasma speaker. So what that means? Well, it means that when we play some music with the interrupted circuit, the plasma arc will stop with low peaks of the music and the arc will be created on the high peaks of the music. I didn't really get those results, but anyway this second circuit had a lot more power. With the other circuit with the PCB kit, we have a constant plasma arc and the music is modulated on top of those high frequency arcs. So we will take a look at both circuits today, but let's start with this first one that comes in a kit that I bought online and you will find the links for this below if you want to buy it as well. You can also find my schematic and the Gerber files for this PCB and the full schematic below in the description. With this kit from the internet, you receive the PCB, the flyback transformer, some wires and all the components and following the schematic you can assemble the module. Once assembled, you can connect a 3.5mm jack for the music, supply the module at 12 volts from a powerful supply with around 5 amps of current and then connect the flyback transformer at the output. For the transformer, to make the primary coil, we need to make between 6 and 8 loops with a thick wire around the ferrite core. Then we connect it to the module and the secondary output will be between the main thick wire and one of the pins below, which in my case is marked with a red line. 
I supply the module and connect the secondary output to this ceramic support with two electrodes. Because ceramic is a good insulator, so the sparks will jump only at the tip of the electrodes, where the distance is smaller. So I pour it on and apply some music from my smartphone. To start with the plasma arcs, you must flip the small switch off and then turn it back on, and the circuit will start oscillate and create the plasma. The results are quite awesome, we can create arcs of a few centimeters. The music is not that loud, and we can also hear the high frequency hiss from the arcs instead of the actual music. But anyway, let's analyze a bit the circuit. So the magic is created between the primary coil of the flyback and this high voltage capacitor. A coil together with a capacitor is a so-called LC tank, and this will resonate. The primary coil is connected on this side to positive 12 volts. The other side is connected to a MOSFET, which is connected to ground through a second MOSFET. So by modulating the signal applied to the MOSFET gate, we modulate when the circuit is closed and the power is applied to the flyby coil. The music signal is also connected to the base of two BJT transistors that create an inverter. Then we connect the output to some other BJT transistors in cascade and with that we can amplify the signal, because the music voltage from a smartphone is very very low. So that output is used to apply some pulses to the LC tank and make it resonate. And on top of the resonance frequency which is given by the used components such as the 330 nanofrad capacitor and the inductance of the primary coil from the flyback, on top of that we insert the music signal as well and that's how we can get the music on top of the plasma arcs. The second MOSFET here is connected to ground and is activated with the sliding switch, and that will turn the oscillation on and off. It's a pretty easy circuit. So follow the schematic and mount the PCB. We add the audio input jack connector, the switch, then we add the MOSFET, which by the way it must have a heat dissipator otherwise it will burn out very fast, the capacitors as well, and the small SMD components on the back. Check all the links for this circuit and the PCB below. It's quite amazing to see the plasma arcs forming, and hearing the music getting out of them. Ok, so let's take a look at the second schematic and this homemade PCB that I've made. First of all, as you can see, I'm now using a huge IGBT and I've placed it over a big heat dissipator, because at such power the transistor was getting hot in a couple of seconds, very hot, even more than 100 degrees. Then we have once again a big capacitor of 330 nanofarads to oscillate together with the primary coil of the flyback transformer. The main difference for this circuit is that the music modulation is made with a 555 timer. As you know, this IC will create a square wave and we can change the frequency of that signal using this potentiometer. And on top of that, we connect the audio signal to a BJT transistor to invert it, and then we can control the reset pin of the 555 timer, and by that we can tell the IC when to enable the high frequency output or not. And by that, the output signal will be with the rhythm of the music. The rest of the circuit is just the regulation I see to get 12 volts from 24 volts, because this circuit will work at 24 volts, but we supply the 555 timer with only 12 volts. And again, the flyback primary coil is connected between VCC and the MOSFET, connected to ground. And the gate of this MOSFET, which in my case is an IGBT, is controlled with the square wave from the 555 timer. And between the drain and the source of the transistor, we have the 330 nanofrad capacitor, and that's it. You can get this and the rest of the schematics from below. So I first solder the voltage regulation part with a huge capacitor at the input, because this circuit will create a lot of noise. Then with the multimeter and the potentiometer, we set the output at exactly 12 volts. 
Then we can solder the rest of the components and I place the IGPT external to the PCB and fix it in place on a heat dissipator. And this is very important, because this circuit will waste a lot of power and transform that into heat. I connect the flyback at the output. And the secondary is connected on one side to a metal case, in order to increase the area, and on the other side to just a simple wire. We supply this at 24 volts, and also make sure that your supply could give around 5 or 6 amps, otherwise the voltage will drop. This circuit will need more than just a few millivolts at the base of this transistor in order to control it with the music. And since the music signal from my smartphone is very low, we need to amplify that signal. Franzoli Electronics has a circuit for that using an operational amplifier, but that didn't quite work for me, so maybe I had some connection errors. So that's why for this test, I will increase the audio signal using another high voltage transformer that I had laying around. So the output from this transformer is connected to the audio input of my circuit and now we can test it. I play some music and power on the circuit and there you go. Once again we can get huge arcs, of a few centimeters and that's amazing. The music is a bit louder and the sparks are powerful. The circuit is using around 150 watts. And the IGBT is getting quite hot. If we make the gap too big, the sparks will die and new sparks will appear at the base of the flyback transformer, so watch out with that, because that could damage the transformer. Ok so here's another cool example. We connect the output to these wires and as you can see, we make the gap larger and larger while going upwards. So the arc will start here, where the gap is smaller, but since the plasma will hit the air around, this arc will start rising. And it will do that till the gap is too big, so the arc can't be created anymore, so it's easier to just start a new arc at the bottom. And this process will repeat on and on. This is quite cool, right? So guys, these were my tests for a plasma speaker and the so-called interrupted plasma speaker. The results are sparky and awesome, right? So check the description and electronoops.com for more and thanks again to Franzoli Electronics for his work. If you like this video and you have learned something new, give me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so that was the video for this week, I hope that you like it. And as always, the most important part for me is that you have learned something new. And I would like to thank you to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon because that for me is huge. And by the way, if you would like to support my projects, you have all my links below for this Patreon page, for my social media, for my shop and so on. So thanks again and see you later guys.